Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. Today we're going to be going over some of the finer points of the newest versions of KiCad, including the uh, the new stuff that was added from CERN, which is uh, alongside the KiCad development team. So we're going to open this up here. If you do recall, this happened about, it was announced about a year ago, and uh, and so that was when we started seeing a lot of the, the new development stuff. Uh, but basically what we're going to do today is we're going to go in and actually open up the file that we had synced from GitHub in the previous video. And again, if you need to install a version of KiCad on Ubuntu or if you want to learn how to sync a, uh, or I guess clone a, a GitHub project, go back and watch the last video, which will be linked below. So what we're going to do is jump right into the layout program. Uh, we can also, we could have gone into the schematic, but that's not quite as interesting, at least not right now. So what I'm going to do is turn off, this is the, this is showing the bench buddy board. I'm going to turn off the ground layer and actually I'm going to turn off the back layer as well. And we're just going to look at the top, the top side. So I'm actually going to turn off the pads on the back as well and turn off all the silk screens. Okay. So now we're just looking at copper on the top side. And, uh, I guess that's also the mask layer there. So, uh, what we're going to do is look at one main feature here, which is the actual trace routing. And so if we go in and we hit, uh, you can either hit X or you can hit uh, the button over here to start routing a trace. What we can do is, if we're on the right layer, right, which is copper top side, we can go in and start just tracing out, drawing drawing a trace here. Now, the interesting thing, though, is with, the, with some of this new CERN development, this starts to, oh, <laughs> this does nothing. <laughs> I'm actually in, this is in the normal mode here. So... Uh, basically, it uh, just normal traces, just drawing normal traces. Sorry about that. Uh, what we need to do is switch to the OpenGL mode. If we do that, you can see it actually does look different. Some of it's just because the grid is different, uh, but some of it's actually how the, the lines are rendered and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is, again, go into the trace stuff here. I'm going to go a little bit higher up here. And say, say we want to start this pad and we want to take it somewhere else. Well, what we can do is, if we start moving the mouse now, we can see it actually starts to try and route around other things. I guess this is uh, not a good location here. Uh, yeah. Boy, that's going all the way around. Let's try a different trace. <laughs> okay, let's try from here. This is the thermocouple input. If we're trying to get across here, we can see it actually goes around objects. And again, through here, it starts trying to find different ways through. In this case, it actually can't get through because that clearance is not enough. It's actually set to 6 mil clearance. But if we try and sneak it through here, we can see, okay, yeah, it actually does start getting around there. And basically, it's 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 just following following the mouse along and just trying to find the most optimal path going around things. Now, this is one of the, the new things in the, the router from CERN and the KiCad team. Uh, if we want to switch modes, the other interesting one is called push and shove. And so what the way we get to that, and the difficult thing about this, this is actually why I wanted to make this video, because it's actually kind of hard to find even after I had installed this. You actually you need to be in the trace mode, hit X or that button. And then if you hit E, you can actually switch the actual settings for the interactive router. That was the walk around method. And next we'll go to highlight collisions. If we if we do that and we hit OK, from here we can start drawing a trace and it basically just kind of highlights, oh, well now we're going over top of things. And uh, and that's instead of uh, just not allowing it to happen. Now if you go into the if we go back into the other if we go back into this other mode here, sorry, that's the virtual machine again. If we go back in the view, go back to default mode, we can see that from this trace we can actually we can mouse over top of it but what will happen is if i click it actually won't place the trace and that's because of the the in situ drc that's happening that's what that that outline is on top of the trace right it's actually showing you how close it can be to things so i can actually i can draw this trace uh well i guess the grid's not let me change the grid real quick so if we right click change the grid to something smaller it's around 50 mils right now. Let's go down to 5 mils. So if we go to something smaller, we can actually get pretty close. right? We can see we can actually get about that close. And if I click, it still actually allows me to do that kind of thing. right? It's, it's basically showing me a guideline of how close I can get before it'll, it'll give me errors. Now, if I get too close, 
if I click there, if I sorry, that one worked, but if I try and click here, it's actually just not going to place the trace, no matter how much I click. And even if you click too much, it starts to get rid of it. Now the difference there is if we're back, if I hit F11, ooh, ooh, lost my trace. So I hit F11. We're back. We're back in the other mode, the OpenGL mode. Now if I hit X, start drawing this trace. Now it will once again highlight everywhere that I'm crossing over that something is going to give a DRC error. So that's the highlight method. Now the most fun one, let's look at that. If we look at, uh, if we right click, or sorry, if we hit E, and then we go to uh, shove, this is the last one. And we start a trace here. Now we start to go up towards it. Now before it highlighted it, this time, it actually starts moving it out of the way. And that is just really great, especially for when you, so you can see that this is actually a, that's a spy bus that I'm pushing around right now, especially for digital signals like that, where they're already going to be pretty closely tied together. Basically right there, it's basically doing uh, constraint calculations and saying, okay, this can be no closer than six mil away from one another. But once it does that, it says, okay, well, we've got an optimal trace here and we can move stuff around as needed. Now, if we go back into the, into the options menu, we could say, well, we don't want to move any of the vias around. So if we did that, and and we actually started to push pushing stuff stuff around now the trace will move oh, oh that is still moving the vias i'm not sure why though uh that's interesting okay i didn't think that was should happen but <laughs> uh i i thought that that meant the uh, vias should stay where they are but i guess someone might not be working or i might be doing that wrong um we can also go in and change the de design rules right so if we oh sorry it's on millimeters. I want to switch back to inches because that's how I started this thing. So if we go into design rules and now if we change the clearance, something a little bit bigger, it should recalculate so that it uh, it doesn't look quite as close. And let me also just change this. Oh, that's not going to work. Yeah, sorry. Too many net classes. So if I change this one to 20 as well, and then this should be able to change to 20. Okay. Yep. Nope. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm missing something here. Uh, traces, spaces. Ah, this one. How about now? Nope. All right, well, let's see if that... <laughs> nope. Had to do that. Keep it where it was. All right, and now if we go and trace it out, I think... No, it must be using that global one there. So I do need to actually change that global one in order to get it to work properly. Let's go look at that one more time. I look at the global. Oh, duh. This is the track width. Sorry. <laughs> so these are all widths. Um, my bad. Uh, uh, I'm not actually sure. Any for tracks via diameters. Well, what the heck, let's try train <coughs> changing this one as well. Well, first we'll go over here. This was actually the one that was the problem here. 0.02 here. 0.02 here. Let's see if that does the difference. Oh, I hit X. No, we're in the right mode. That's good. Yeah, it looks like it might be based on the actual track width. Yeah, looks like it's on the track width there. So, so it is tied to the track width, which is unfortunate. But uh, usually, you can match track width and uh, and clearance as well. So, I'm actually not sure did it. No, it's the right mode there. Uh, huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we can kind of see it. That uh, this shows it a little bit better. So yeah, it looks like that actually is is defining it there. So that could be, we need to play with that a little bit more. But the main idea is if you do have the track width, uh, you know, if you do need to shove stuff around, uh, the push and shove is definitely a fun fun thing to play with. If you're routing out memory lines or anything like that, it can be a, a godsend for that kind of stuff. And if you're trying to, you know, just trying to find uh, pathways, right? If you want to just find pathways and do the walk around method, um, basically that's going to allow you to find, you know, especially if you get in a tight jam, you can kind of start, figuring out new ways to get around stuff and that can be really there you go click and oh, that's why i'm on the wrong layer now 
top layer. Let's try routing from this pin. You see now, it, and basically it just helps you to find stuff. It's basically like a an ad hoc auto router, right? I'm not, I'm no fan of the auto router, but uh, you know sometimes it can be helpful if you kind of in a bind and just want to see your different options. This could be another way to kind of just play around with that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely try them out if you haven't uh, already. Definitely go back and check out the link, the link below, and see if. Uh, you know, see if you can get the the new version of KiCad installed. This is definitely one of the better reasons to do it. You know, there's a lot of other stuff that we'll be going over in future videos like libraries and stuff like that. But for now, enjoy playing around with the push and show, and thanks for watching.